waging war on corruption. Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Obviously, I'm agitated. I'm, I'm upset. Playing right into the globalist hands, as usual. It's all part of the global destabilization program that's accelerating here domestically. That's not my view. That's a fact. I think we can safely say that. I predicted that Obama would try to stage a race war with the media manipulating people. Regardless of what you think of the cops, what side you're on, this is being manipulated towards a larger crisis. While Obama calls for reconciliation, all of his surrogates and minions try to stir it up. This is globalist divide and conquer. The National Guard's being deployed to Ferguson. It's got to be five, 6,000 around the streets. This is just a, this is not a disaster waiting to happen. This is a disaster that's already happening that's about to get a lot worse. And I have that from attorneys in Kansas City and St. Louis who know the inside scoop and know the terrain. Um, I want to get George Norrie on this week. He's there in St. Louis. Uh, I know he was very gracious because the guy works really hard to come on last week. I want to see if George will pop in for 10 minutes uh, or so sometime this week to give us his take as well. But I want to shut up and go to your phone calls. Long segment coming up. This is a short one. Uh, let's go to Deputy Sheriff Jim in Ohio. Then we'll go to Raul, Wolverine, Phil, and others. Uh, go ahead, Jim. What's your take on this? Hey, Alex. Uh, I'll tell you what. It's, this globalist plan of what they're doing to our country is definitely starting to unfold right before our eyes. And... I must say, have you heard uh, the story of the woman that was a spokesman for that officer on the radio this morning? No. Okay, she come on the the um, radio this morning. I heard it on WLW out of uh, Cincinnati. Oh, yeah, WLW, yeah. Yeah, they played her segment on there, and she said that when he rolled up on that scene that these two gentlemen were in the middle of the road, he rolled his window down, and he said, you know, for him to get out of the road and they wouldn't, you know, they was cussing at him or something. I don't know what was said, but she said that he pulled over a few feet up the road from them on the, like the, the, the berm and was looking in his mirror at them. And at that time he heard come over the radio about these uh, suspects to be on the lookout for that had just robbed this store. Well, he looked in his mirror and he thought, my goodness, that looks like the suspects they're talking about. So he started to deploy from the cruiser and this gentleman that got shot bull rushed him in back into his cruiser. Well, I've got to say that fits with the bullet holes in the front. Remember, they'd all said his hands were up and that the. Uh, and again, I don't think we know the total truth yet, but just entertaining this. They said the hands were up and he was shot in the back. Well, he wasn't shot in the back. And the police were trained to shoot center of mass. Why would there be bullet holes in his hands unless he was running forward with his hands in front of his chest? Well, the story gets better because she, uh, she said that this officer had said that there was a struggle inside the cruiser. The gun had went off inside the cruiser. And then these two suspects took off. Well... Knowing now that he had heard this uh, felony call that had came out, now he, another felony has taken place because he's tried to get this officer's gun inside the cruiser. He deploys from the cruiser, and these guys are back off of him. And the, the story that he told was that, you know, the gentleman that got shot was saying, you're not going to do nothing, you know, and he was yelling back at him. And the officer said that it seemed that he was on something. Now, I don't know. Well, I'll say this. Was. I'll say this. Uh, somebody email us at showtipsinfowars.com who this person is, the spokesman. I want to look into it. A lot of news breaking. But he looks like they've now confirmed it's Brown in the video in the shop. He looks like he's on something right there. Uh, I mean, he looks really whacked out of his mind. And he did uh, have marijuana in his pocket. 
That's now uh, come out. Uh, court investigation. Michael Brown was shot from the front, had marijuana in his system. I want to hear the rest of the story when we get back. We'll try to find that clip. Stay there, sir. I'm David Hall, founder of Diamond Gusset, where we are proud of our 100% grown and sewn American-made jeans. Whether you're out for dinner, working on the farm, or on the road, Diamond Gusset Jeans offers a full spectrum of style and sizes for any occasion. Our loyal customers enable us to continue sponsoring Liberty Media outlets. Use promo code FREEDOM to receive a 15% discount at gusset.com. In Liberty, David Hall, Diamond Gusset Jean Company. Tell folks how you got introduced to Super Male, and then when Super Female came out, tell us what happened. After I saw such a huge positive change in my husband, I had to try it for myself. Talk about the effects. I feel great when I wake up in the morning. I have drive to go to the gym. I feel like I look better. I feel better. I feel sexier. I love it. Even if you don't believe in supplements, take the challenge. Get a bottle of Super Male, a bottle of Super Female. Check it out for yourself. Consult your physician. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today. This is life-changing. This is Alex Jones for InfoWarsLife.com. The latest in preparedness is now here. An electrically stabilized colloidal silver solution that can be added to both your home cabinet and preparedness pack alike. Concentrated to 30 parts per million in what has been dubbed the Survival Silver Solution. The new InfoWars Life Silver Bullet Colloidal Silver is the answer for you and your family. And it's entirely free of toxic artificial additives that are loaded into many products. The InfoWars Life Silver Bullet Silver is so powerful that it is concentrated into a two ounce bottle and is not recommended for extended continual use. This is not a low grade formula. We are working with one of the top laboratory manufacturers in the United States to bring you the best form of colloidal silver using electrical processes within a base of deionized water. For your preparedness storage or your home kitchen, purchase your bottle of InfoWarsLife.com Silver Bullet Colloidal Silver today and find other amazing supplements at InfoWarsLife.com. I began to get into iodine a few years ago because it was helping me and my family so much get healthy and detoxify. Most people know that iodine deficiency has been a crisis around the world. Iodine is key to so many of the body's functions, especially the thyroid. I discovered a product being developed by Dr. Group. You now know it as Survival Shield True Nascent Iodine that your body can really absorb. Then, about a year ago, he said, listen, if you think this is powerful, I'm going to come out with rare earth, deep earth crystals. And the results that I personally have had have been life-changing. Nobody else has got iodine based on these pure crystals, ladies and gentlemen. This is innovating, and the best part is it helps fund InfoWars.com, the radio show, the TV show, the whole media operation promoting true libertarian ideas. For a limited time, experience the ancient power of Survival Shield X2. Take advantage of this unprecedented 30% off Super Detox Special at InfoWarsLife.com. He's the T-Rex of political talk. Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. Paul Joseph Watson will join us briefly at the bottom of the hour. He's got the detailed reports out with Kurt Nemo and others at InfoWars.com proving that the DOJ, communist, and new Black Panthers have hijacked the Ferguson protest and are trying to stir things up and get them violent. Kurt Nemo has another article, Nation of Islam and New Black Panthers directing violent protests in Ferguson and now more nights of intense looting and burning. The National Guard is being deployed. Heavy armored vehicles have now shown up and are coming off the backs of 18-wheelers right now. Meanwhile, a Ferguson cop threatens to shoot a journalist. Somebody's got to talk to these police, man, about their PR tactics. I mean, it just, you could not turn the public against you in a more ridiculous way. But this is just bad, folks. Everybody just wants to fight. Ferguson riots being exacerbated by violent provocateurs. Again, that's Watson has two reports out on that. National Guard ordered on the streets of Ferguson, Missouri. Why were the police in Ferguson told not to stop the rampant looting on Friday night? Are we on the verge of renewed race riots with the turn in the war cycle 2014? The Highway Patrol puts out a statement saying outsiders are coming into Ferguson from St. Louis and other cities to take advantage of it to engage in criminal activity. Well, here's the deal. Anybody tries to rob my operation or my house, I'm going to shoot you. 
I don't care if you're white or you're black. I catch somebody coming in my house, I'm going to defend myself. You, you understand that? But the political correct folks are going to promote this and say it's okay, the looting and rioting. Well, they're just angry. You know, this is a new race war and a class war. And this is what you get because of the inequities out there on and on and on. And the establishment is going to let this happen to cause a big fight. I want to go to Tom and, and, and Wolverine and Phil and, and Raul. I want to go quickly. But Jim is a deputy sheriff, and he was breaking down what he heard on the radio. And, I, and I've seen some of these reports as well. This is what they put in the police report, basically, uh, what you're saying about what was seen and, and reportedly uh, what happened. So recap it and finish, finish your story uh, dealing with Michael Brown, who, again, they tried to use a photo of the guy five years ago looking like a little kid. I mean, he is a big guy with all these thug pictures flipping people off with that whole I'm a gangster, you know, thug attitude. I'm not saying he deserved to be shot in the back. But now the autopsy's out, he was shot in the front. And I'm not defending the police carte blanche. I mean, we've got checkpoints that are illegal. We've got the, 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 the police shooting rubber bullets at innocent reporters and lying about it. Uh, we've got examples of all sorts of stuff. We don't want the police state, and a race war will sell the police state, the federalization, the armored vehicles, which again are really meant for the Tea Party. So after we've set the precedent here and had this splendid little race war that'll be fun to watch on television for some of the sick voyeurs out there, we will be left with Homeland Security on the streets of America under the political correctness. And then everyone will have to subscribe and subscribe to political correctness as the new religion to never allow the riots of 2014 again. This is the false flag. I'm not speculating. I predicted it all on July 17th and did an emergency special report up on Infowars.com. And we'll put that on screen for TV viewers. U.S. Army trains to fight black Americans. Doomsday Disneyland facility uses practice ground for civil unrest. And I say in the video and in the article, the next shoe to drop will be exacerbating staging or, or manipulating something like this into a conflagration. And now we have the feds there openly manipulating this. I mean, look at all the race baiting of MSNBC getting all this hyped up. It's like a Ku Klux Klan channel for blacks and Hispanics or something. But it's all a bunch of white globalist and New World Order engineers, leftists, that want Cloward and Piven to bring this country down. Shut off the power plants. Bring in unlimited illegals. Stir everybody up. Sell the idea that you're poor because of racist white people. No, you're poor because the globalist offshore. I'm sorry I'm ranting. I apologize. Jim, finish your story. I'll go to everybody. Go ahead. Well, Alex, I'll tell you, if what that woman said is true, uh, when he deployed from that cruiser, this guy was taunting him, and then he bull rushed him again. And after what he had just experienced inside that cruiser, uh, I must say I would have taken the same action that he took. And what makes me absolutely vomit over this whole incident is how the how the globalists and how these people are turning this probably and i don't know because i haven't got all the facts yet what seems to me if this is true to be a justifiable act on this officer's part that these people are trying to turn us against each other and trying trying to get this country in such an upheaval to where this is going on all over the place and, and I mean, it's just, it's sickening to be an officer in this country and to see, you know, that there are some good men out here that are trying to serve and protect their communities. And then we all get kind of labeled in this one batch and it's not fair to the good officers that are out well, there. Well, exactly. But that's how the black folks feel when the thugs come in from St. Louis and do all this. And then they all lose their right to demonstrate. And again, the average cop I know is most police are really nice, smart people that know what's going on. I'm just honest about that. Most police I know are listeners that I run into. Uh, and, and, and I don't just mean they come up to me because they're listeners. I mean, I talk to other police and they say a lot of police are awake to what's happening. We don't want to make the police our enemy. We don't want the globalists to get this whole thing stirred up so they can fully federalize them and then turn around and use them against the Tea Party. I just want to figure out how to defuse the situation. I appreciate your call. Uh, let's go ahead now and go to Raul in California. Thanks for holding her on the air. Hey, Alex. Yes, sir. Hello. Hello. How you doing, Alex? Uh, I'm calling. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for 